Good morning, dear student. Today we are going to discuss about the reliability and validity. What is reliability and what is validity? First, we are going to discuss about the reliability. Suppose you are going to take your weight on your weighing machine. Then that machine is giving your weight about 50 kg or 60 kg, whatever. So then again you are going to take your weight and again this this machine is giving your weight is 50 kg. Again you are going to take your weight and again this machine is giving 50 kg. Then it can be you can say this machine is reliable. This machine is reliable for your weighing. What is validity? Validity means whatever instrument you are using, how that instrument has been constructed to get such reliable informations, reliable weight that is valid, that should be valid. How that particular uh, instrument, like in research, your instrument will be your questionnaire. Then your questionnaire construction of the questions is in that way, by that way you, you are getting that particular answer. Like here one more thing you should understand, reliability is based on the people or respondent. They are giving right answer to answer or not, this we can rely, this we can test by your questionnaire questionnaire format but how this questionnaire has been framed construct that should be valid that should be valid that instrument should be valid this is the concept behind the reliability and validity we we'll discuss in detail about the reliability and validity in this particular uh, for the slides now what is the major uh, steps for the developing uh, this uh, final scale the first will develop the theory like uh, previous researches has been developed some theories like Maslow has developed their motivational theory need hierarchy theory and again this uh, characteristic theory has been developed then some natural theories are there like if we do exercise then you will be healthy. If you use some uh, spices, then your immunity power will be increased. But then, when you develop that theory, on the basis of that theory, we will make our researches. And second step will generate initial pool of items theory, and then secondary data and qualitative research. Then we will develop the uh, initial pool of items regarding your uh, research and on the and on that basis we will collect the data from secondary and qualitative research. Select a reduced set of items based on qualitative judgment. Third step, then collect data from large pre-test sample. Then we will go for the statistical analysis, develop purified scale and then collect more data from different samples and evaluate scale, validity and generalization and then we will go for the final scale. This is the uh, process of the construct your research outlines based questionnaire and you will decide your final scales. These scales you can uh, check, you can make uh, analysis for the reliability of the scale and validity of the, your uh, research questionnaires and then finally scales will decide. What are the scale evolution? <coughs> scale evolution uh, first is decided into three part. First, reliability, validity, and generalizability. Reliability will be discussed in uh, again classified in three parts that is, test, retest, 
alternative forms their internal consistency and validity again divided into the content creation construct then again construct will divide into convergent discriminant and nomological will detail discuss all the parts of this scale evolution <coughs> measurement of the accuracy <clears throat> how you will measure accurate uh, how you will measure accurate uh, your scales are accurate or not whatever you are going to decide decided in your objectives and you have construct your uh, questions on the basis of your objectives then you will go to uh, develop some scales also and that is scales like likert scale then semantic differential scale or stepel scale whatever scale you are going to use that scales are giving you right answer whatever you want from your respondent so then measurement of the accuracy will be depend upon the true uh, score model in true score model x0 xt xs and xr x0 is now denoting by the observed score of measurement xt is a true score of characteristics xs is systematic errors and xr is ran random errors there should be uh, your x0 means your uh, uh, measurement will be reliable x0 means your measurement should be reliable if these things are not affected if these things means xt xr and x x xs Uh, will not impact on your uh, responses you are getting from your respondent what are the uh, these are the uh, systematic error and random error which we have discussed in the lot last question so there may be some uh, systematic and uh, random errors systematic errors may be intelligence social desirability or education that should not be impact if you are formatting and constructing your questionnaire and questions then these particular uh, parts should not be impact on your answering of the respondent then your answer will come uh, accurate otherwise it will be influenced by that so these are the such type of the uh, your uh, potential sources of the error or measurement like other short term transistent personal factors such as the health emotions and fatigue that should not be impact on your uh, answering of the respondent you should construct such type of your question that should not be impact by the health or emotions or fatigue of the respondent then your answer will be accurate so these three things you should be consider now in reliability uh, what is reliability we can again discuss in detail in first slide we have discussed about the what is the reliability by the example of weighing machine and we can go again and again and we can check the weight of the of any person and if that weight is coming continuously same then we have decided that machine is reliable but in research how we can do these things because we cannot go to Uh, respondent again and again for asking the uh, asking about the uh, reliability of uh, that person's answers so here is one uh, process of the questions and that process suppose in the second example you can see if you want to know about any students or respondent is liking math or not liking math then we have options we have option to know about the number of questions we can ask by other ways like you like number you like equation you like table you like formula because these things are related to mathematics and we can ask these questions on on the basis of likert scale in likert scale here five is highly agreed four is agreed and uh, 3 not decided 2 is not agreed and 1 is highly not agreed 
will ask this question from your uh, respondent then he may give answers on the following ways suppose uh, we have asked this question about four uh, respondent then first respondent had given the answer like he likes number highly agreed he likes equation agreed he likes table highly agreed he likes formula not decided means not they are not here then what we will take make the conclusion about this that person is mainly liking math or not liking math mainly this is the positive side you can see because three is neutral and four five is highly agreed and agreed this is the positive side and this means he likes math like that one person is giving such type of answer another person may give some other type of answers like um, you can see here for the second respondent then he may give answer like he likes he likes numbers like this he likes equation like highly agreed he may be like tables like this he may like uh, formula like this so the, he is also positive but suppose one person who is giving answer like uh, this way suppose we ask question you like numbers yes highly agreed you like equation highly not agreed you like table not agreed you like formula highly agreed then how it is possible a person who is liking numbers and who is liking formula but is not liking equation and table because all these things are related with mathematics then it is uh, this person is not giving right answer we can conclude we can conclude that this person is not giving right answer his answer is not reliable so then in researches we can find out such type of the answering uh, we can know about the reliability of the answer of the respondent another thing which we can get here that if all the four persons are giving their responses that maximum numbers the maximum score will be 20 okay this is five scale uh, uh, likert scale five scale and then here four person is giving answer then it will be maximum number of score will be 20 and if we'll see uh, minimum number will be four if everyone is giving one 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 then four then and if we'll see average it will be 20 then we can conclude conclude if this particular one one uh, column it will be 4 2 here will the score will be calculated because in likert scale this is a submitted rating scale if it's a submission of this answers if it's submission of this answers if submission of this answer will be based on in this particular interval 4 to 8 so then it will be uh, highly not agreed it is negative side of direct unidirectional if it it is if it will be 8 to 12 then it will be highly it is be not agreed but here it is been highly not agreed if the score is coming 16 to 20 highly highly uh, agreed that person will be regarding your mathematics and here a person is getting uh, in this particular uh, if the submitted score is coming uh, 12 to 16 then uh, it will be your highly and uh, it will be only agreed it is highly agreed if the score is committed the score is coming 12 to 16 uh, agreed and if 4 to 8 it is highly not agreed and if coming it 8 to 12 it will be not agreed this is the way we can calculate and this interval scale will be used for the t-test also 
and in it is one thing is more you can get negative unidirectionally a person can give their answers in uh, one side it cannot be uh, two side means he is, if he is giving he is not liking math he may be give their answer from 1 to 3 he should not shift here if he is shifting here in this particular unit direction that it may be he is not giving right answer so then whenever you are constructing our questionnaire we should be very careful about what type of the questions we are asking and what type of the responses respondent are giving it is depend upon so uh, reliability is based on respondent validity is based on scale whatever we have constructed that is that will be based on your validity but what responses respondent is giving on your scale that will be your reliability okay now uh, we will discuss in here here it is the if we'll compile this data in excel format then here r1 suppose the respondent one is giving only all the uh, first question uh, second question third question fourth question one then it will be uh, which i have told here this is the minimum minimum is uh, submitted scale here minimum submitted average uh, score here minimum submitted uh, maximum score will be here then it will decide your unidirectionality and intervals also give you uh, information about the histogram of the graph histogram then histogram you know about then you can go for the t test and uh, other test also okay then we'll go for the next uh, slide and we'll see uh, in detail other form reliability now reliability reliability refers to extent to which a scale produce consistent result in repeated measurement are made a systematic sources of error do not have any adverse impact on reliability which we have discussed in last uh, slides like systematic and random error because they affect the measurement in condensed way and do not lead inconsistency in contrast a random error produces inconsistency leading to lower reliability reliability can be defined as the extent to which measure measures are free from random errors xr if xr is zero then it will be perfectly reliable reliability is assessed by the determining the proportion of systematic variation in scales this is done determining the association between the scores obtained from the different administra uh, administrations of scales if the association is high the scale yield consistent result and is therefore reliable approaches for the assessing reliability include test retest alternative forms and internal consistency method to know reliability is um, uh, accurate or not accurate then we have number of other ways like alternative forms and internal consistency methods test retest so these things we are using for the knowing about the reliability reliability uh, we have discussed with example reliability refers to the extent to which a scale produces consistent result if repeated measurements are made like weighing machine i have given you like any uh, uh, if in researches if you want to know about the reliability of the uh, your scales or you know your uh, uh, questions answers from the respondent then you can get the number of other ways are there number of other methods are there and then you can right now in spaces there is reliability test spss and other softwares are and providing such type of the test by that test we can also know about the reliability of the uh, your uh, scales or questions then on uh, next part is systematic sources of the error do not have any adverse impact on reliability 
because the effect the measurement is constant they and uh, way and do not lead inconsistency in contrast random error produces inconsistency leading to lower reliability reliability can be defined as the extent to which measurement measures are free from the random errors so there should not be i have, we have discussed in detail about the what type of the uh, random errors and what type of the you know, systematic errors can be impact but that should not be your question should be construct like that ki that should be free from your uh, answering of the there should not be impact on the answering of the respondent to know about the reliability there are a number of the ways the, which we can know about the reliability and rela like test and retest alternative forms internal consistency methods so we can discuss in detail in next part next slide in test retest reliability respondent are administered identical set of the scales items at two different item, times and the degree of similarity between the two measurements is determined mainly what happened in test and retest as in by this name we are knowing then again once we will test and then again go for the test so this is the uh, when any uh, you have uh, your respondent had filled the forms once and then again we will go for the uh, filling of that forms and uh, within the 15 days after or uh, one month after then then whatever the result sets came in previous time that should be similar in second time when you have retest this is the one way you can check the reliability alternative forms of reliability two different forms of the scales are construct the same respondent are measured at the two different times with a different form being used each time suppose you are using one silicate scale again uh, you are using second type of the like symmetric differential scale you are using or staple scale you are using so then this type of scales result should be come whenever you are going for the check reliability okay so then again we will go for the next slide and in next slide you will get the other information regarding reliability internal consistency reliability what is internal consistency reliability determines the extent to which different part of a summated scales are consistent in what they indicate about the characteristics being measured internal consistency there should be internal consistency determine the extent which different part of summated scales are consistent in what they indicate about the characteristics is being measured so then whatever the uh, uh, scales you are using in your construction of your questions for particular uh, any uh, any particular uh, factor if you are getting uh, using some number of variables so then whatever scales you have used that scale should be same that should not be changed because like one place you have used uh, highly agreed to five and um, highly not agreed one then again you have used in some other questions or some other for some other factor if you are using five for um, highly not agreed and one for highly agreed this should not be determine the extent to which different part of the submitted scale are consistent in what they indicate about the characteristics being measured means when you will make your submission submission on the, means you are getting the uh, every questions answers in submitted form some of the uh, that particular answers questions answers by respondent 1 respondent 2 respondent 3 so then it will it should be consistent internally it should be consistent and reliable that should not be whatever scale you are using that should not be changed in every particular factors or variables if you are using 
scales that scale should be because that submitted scale should be same in split half reliability in split half reliability items on scales are divided in two levels and resulting half scores are correlated here what we do suppose you have 300 respondent you have divided in two part 150 and 150 you have distributed your questionnaire to every uh, 150 and 150 respondent then whatever the answers they are giving that should be correlated we'll go for the correlation and that should be correlated if not correlated that then it will be not reliable another uh, form of the uh, check the reliability this is the maximum used in researches convex alpha coefficient alpha Convex alpha is average of the possible uh, half. The coefficient results from different ways of splitting the scale items. This coefficient varies from 0 to 1 and a value of 0.6 or less generally indicates unsatisfactory internal consistency reliability. Internal consistency reliability means here in coefficient alpha we are in next slide we'll discuss in detail first i, I want to tell you in uh, social science in present time it should be not 0.6 it should be 0.7 1 to 0.7 and what is what is happening and this is the maximum useful for the and maximum in maximum research this is required to check the, the skills by this convex alpha uh, and what is this um, this type of the uh, this, uh, this is the uh, your uh, test so here suppose you are uh, going to know about the qualities of a guide suppose here uh, we have four uh, variables like knowledge communication motivation network Knowledge should be in a uh, guide, communication should be good of the guide, well, he should be motivational, his network should be also. So then these four variables are there and he has, uh, this is the Likert scale responses, 5 is highly uh, satisfied, 4 is satisfied, 3 is again, 3 is your neutral and this is the uh, not satisfied and highly not satisfied. Up here, what happened? A person will give answers like um, knowledge, he should have knowledge, he should be communication, motivational. What happened in uh, Convex Alpha? Convex Alpha, there is in, in formula, there is a R bar. R bar means what? Whatever response is, suppose S1. Statement 1, knowledge, given 4, then S2, communication, given 5, suppose the knowledge given 4, first respondent, here first respondent is given 4 in knowledge, first statement, knowledge 5, not 5, 4, as given 4, then We'll take here 4. We'll take here 4. If he is giving answer for the second question, communication is giving 5. 5, first respondent. He is giving 3 for third statement. 3, neutral. Then again 4, networking. This. So he is mainly positive way, but what I want to say, if this averages, if these averages, uh, this uh, score will be consistent and will be one side and uh, will be consistent, then it will be your R bar will be increased. R bar is what? The average of these scores, 
average of this score if this average of this score will less suppose a respondent is giving 4 then statement 2 is giving 1 statement 3 has given 4 then again statement 4 is given 1 so then the variation in this and variation is so much in this particular statements then r bar will be reduced and then your convex alpha will be reduced so we should be uh, careful about when we are going to construct our uh, questions that should be in such way respondent should give answer in consistency in consistency that should not be um, much differences in their uh, responses another part convex alpha uh, if it is 0.9 then excellent if it is 0.8 then good 0.7 acceptable 0.6 is questionable and 0.5 is poor not accepted from 7.7 .7 is only acceptable from uh, otherwise it is not acceptable this is all about your reliability and in next slides we will discuss about your validity and validity means uh, what validity is uh, why validity uh, I have told you initially reliability is based on your respondent validity is based on your instrument validity is based on your skills this is not based on your respondent how you have constructed your question questionnaire how you have decided your skills for each variables that is based on your instrument instrument means your questionnaire this is all about your reliability if any doubt any uh, then you can ask Thank you very much.